It is one of the most exciting questions of modern space research. What is the interior of a black hole like? Due to the elemental force inherent in these bizarre objects, no information, no radiation, and certainly no matter is able to pass the event horizon of a black hole from the inside back outside. Because of this, a direct exploration of the gravity monsters would be doomed to failure from the start. But does this also mean that the inside of black holes will remain an unknown mystery forever? The unexpected answer to this question is no, but that's not all. Some experts are even convinced that we get to see the hidden areas of the mass monsters every day. And that's because we are in fact already in the heart of a black hole. You'll find out all about the background of this revolutionary theory in today's video. Want to learn more about the groundbreaking discoveries and unique spectacles in the universe on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click the bell to never miss one of our videos again. Go ahead and show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with the content of our posts. The Search for the Beginning Black holes. They are considered monstrous omnivores, cosmic killing machines, and bizarre angels of death. In the first moment, the idea that our universe is in truth, hidden in the inside of such an object, seems extremely absurd. According to the common doctrine, the cosmos originated in the context of a spectacular birth, the Big Bang. At that time, about 13.8 billion years ago, matter, space, and time emerged together from an original singularity. In the astronomical context, this refers to places where the gravitational force is so strong that the curvature of space-time is colloquially infinite. But how is it at all possible for us to understand the origin of the universe from today's point of view? Well, in this respect, the cosmos provides us with a natural assistance, because it's by no means a rigid, unchanging entity, but a construct that has always been expanding. Thus, if we look at the expansion of the universe in a retrograde way, at some point, we will reach a state where the density of energy and matter will become infinite. The starting point of the Big Bang. Although generally accepted, the Big Bang theory is by no means free of criticism. In this regard, the Polish scientist Nikodem Pawlowski argues that the much-cited Big Bang is more likely to have been a kind of big bounce. In truth, we might live inside, or more precisely on the other side, of a black hole. According to Poplowski, this is exactly what black holes are – cosmic gateways to other universes. In fact, it's even possible to prove this breathtaking thesis mathematically. At the end of this train of thought, there is a realization that, if confirmed, would shake the astronomical world to its foundations. The Big Bang never took place. Accordingly, the so-called Big Bang was in truth the rebound of that matter that had accumulated before a black hole. That even the most ingenious minds of all time can be wrong is shown by the following story. In the late 1920s, the Belgian theologian and astrophysicist George Lemet discovers that the galaxies of the cosmos are drifting apart, or in other words, that the universe is steadily expanding. When Lemet explains his observations to Albert Einstein, the latter falls into peals of laughter because Einstein was actually convinced that the cosmos was static. Later, however, Einstein admits to having been mistaken, and the Big Bang theory seems to be confirmed. The Problem of the Singularity What Lemet in his time called a primeval atom, or a cosmic egg, is nowadays known as a singularity. The assumption that space, matter, and time emerged together from this extreme original state has a great advantage, because it makes a fundamental question relevant. What was before the Big Bang? The simple answer, nothing. However, this is not quite as simple as it seems at the first moment. Because actually, we know just as little about the background of the often quoted singularity, where this came from, and whether it really even existed. Nikodem Poplowski also rejects the idea of an original singularity. If one follows the explanations of the Polish expert, then the hour of birth of our cosmos happened approximately in such a way. The matter and energy that the black hole devoured over time accumulated within the structure. Meanwhile, 
The absorbed components were compressed so extremely that they finally were in the form of a cosmic primordial seed. Thereby, the taken up matter and energy bundled themselves so long in the black hole that this compact compound exploded finally and created our cosmic world. Even apart from this exciting theory, it's beyond question for the rest of the scientific community that black holes play a fundamental role in the universe. In the meantime, it's considered as certain that practically every galaxy center is graced by a supermassive black hole, where the gravity monster has a substantial influence on galactic development. Also, outside of the galaxy centers, the mass monsters pervade the cosmos like a kind of invisible patchwork. But how do these grotesque entities actually come into being? And are they really the ruthless machines of destruction they are often described as? Cosmic Vacuum Cleaners? The characteristic abilities of black holes are due to their incomparable compactness. If one of these objects possessed the same mass as the Earth, it would have a diameter of just four-tenths of an inch as a result of this compression. This extreme compactness leads to the fact that, in the immediate areas of black holes, such a strong gravity prevails that nothing that has passed the event horizon can cross it again from the inside back outside, not even light. Because of this, the actual black hole is invisible to our eyes. All we can see of it are the elemental forces it exerts on its immediate surroundings. We know from stellar black holes that they form when a star of a certain size enters the final chapter of its existence. As soon as its nuclear fuel is exhausted, the celestial body ejects its outer layers in the course of an explosive supernova. The remaining stellar core collapses due to its own gravitational pressure into an extremely compact object, or in other words, the stellar black hole. Much more mysterious and powerful are their supermassive counterparts. These can exceed the mass of our sun by a factor of millions or even billions. However, the background of the formation of these galactic colossi is still to be deciphered. Contrary to a widespread assumption, black holes are by no means cosmic vacuum cleaners. It's true that the mass monsters consume entire planets, stars, and huge cloud formations. But for this to happen, the objects must come dangerously close to the black hole's event horizon. Outside this ominous zone, the gravity monster behaves like any other mass body, which is why other celestial bodies can easily orbit it on stable paths. The Big Bounce Before we go into more detail about Poplowski's Big Bounce theory, we should remember that the exact nature of the cosmos is still completely unknown to us. And with that, we mean not only the question about the form and the dimension of the universe, but also whether the designation, the One Universe, corresponds to reality at all. Because there are, in this respect, completely different approaches. The multiverse theory, for example, is based on the assumption that our cosmos is in fact only a tiny link in an infinite chain of other universes. And also the question about the origin provides again and again for big questions in the ranks of experts. Commonly, the Big Bang is interpreted as the beginning of everything. In contrast to this, however, is the theory that the universe runs through a constant cycle. Thus, every cosmic end is followed by a new Big Bang. After this short expansion of the horizon, let's now have a closer look at Poplowski's explanations. As already mentioned, the matter sucked up by the black hole is there afterwards in the form of a tiny seed. But what leads to this seed weighing several billions of solar masses, bursting and creating the unfolding of the cosmos? In this regard, the theory states that the compression process comes to a halt at some point as a result of the rotational behavior of the black hole. These entities rotate at a rapid pace, reaching close to the speed of light. Due to this extreme rotation, incomparably strong torsional forces act on the primordial seed. This means that the object is not only heavy and compressed, but colloquially also twisted together. Now, at some point, the time comes when such an object can suddenly bounce, and according to Poplowski, such an event could be called a big bounce. Conversely, this means that a black hole represents the transitional state between two universes, or a kind of gate that can only be passed through in one direction. If an astronaut now would fall into a black hole, it would be conceivable that he comes out again in a completely different cosmos. 
Of course, it's also possible the poor spaceman 